here at San Gorgonio. We're going to be doing our uh, annual 4th of July San Gorgonio trip. I got Maddie uh, from Lead Me Outdoors here with me today. And uh, yeah, we're going to have a great time. We're going to be going to High Creek Camp. And then uh, tomorrow we're going to hit up the summit at 11,500 feet. So it's going to be a pretty good time. This has been a good trip so far. Lots of water. Yes. Love it. Everywhere we're looking, we're seeing new life. The flowers everywhere. You hear the, chir the birds chirping. The sky's beautiful, nice and blue. Wonderful day today. So way out there in the distance, we've got Mount Baldy. Pretty far away, but uh, yeah, it's kind of sticking out up above the uh, smog layer. So it's good news that we're above it ourselves. So we're actually breathing clean air instead of that crummy air. But uh, yeah, all the way from San Gorgonio, you could see the uh, you could see the uh, San Gabriel's Mount Baldy. All right, we're getting there. Once you can uh, see the falls, you're practically practically at. Uh, at the High Creek. So we just got a couple more, uh, I don't know, what maybe a tenth of a mile, and we're there. It's been a tough trip, man. It's really, uh, really been quite warm and kind of a bit of a brutal slog. I think both, uh, both Matt and I are a little surprised, but uh, that right there is great news. Yeah, buddy. Well, here we got the Six Moon Design uh, Skyscape Trekker all set up. I have to admit, uh, when you get it out in the field and you have no grass getting in the way, I mean, just look at that, that bathtub floor. Let's see if I can zoom in on that thing. That thing is, uh, is way up there. I mean, that's, that's actually quite nice. I'm very surprised. Warming up my water for some pad thai tonight. I'm trying to backpacker's pantry. A little bit different thing for me. We'll see how it all goes. I, uh, I went ahead and, and split it up. So this is uh, half of a pad thai backpacker pantry pad, uh, pad thai. So we'll see how that goes tonight. I'm sure it's going to be uh, really good. All right. I'll mix this up a little bit. Make sure we get all the water in there. And then this one I'm gonna to, supposed to leave for 15 to 20 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this steep in the uh, packet gourmet pouch. That thing is slick, I have to admit. 
if you look out over there, I'm not going to open up the netting because, man, the bugs are actually kind of bad right now. And I'm going to try to keep them out as much as I can. So I'm just going to show you guys kind of from here. So I'll move in a little bit. Maybe you guys can see just a smidge better. But ah, here we go. There's plenty, plenty of light from this side. Okay, so back up here at the top, I have my uh, knickknacks, my bag of knickknacks. It's actually the bag up at the... Uh, at the, uh, the top over there is the uh, bag that the tent came in. I put all my knickknacks in there. Behind that, I have my uh, Torrid Apex jacket just kind of hanging out. Got my hat in there. And uh, using my uh, uh, Neo Air with my 20 degree EE quilt. And then down by my feet, I have my uh, pack, my ULA circuit, and I have my uh, my uh, DCF liner bag. I just happen to have it out. I, was, I have my clothes in there, but I took out all my clothes because get you know believe it or not old man Friesian, he's starting to bundle up there's a brisk wind and uh i'm starting to feel it so, nuts to summer i guess so but we're having a good time here matt and i he's all set up over here he just finished a miso soup yeah good stuff i got my pad thai rolling i got about another uh 12 13 minutes on that so i'll be eating pretty soon too and uh yeah, next uh, next day, be big day. Head up to the summit, see if we can do some exploring. We're gonna be there pretty early, so hopefully we don't get too uh, too burned out on the sun. Uh, but yeah, I think we're gonna have a good time, find some stuff to do. Post up under the tarp. Yeah, good point. All right, so here's our final product. Chicken pad thai by uh, Backpackers Pantry. It's so-so. Um, I mean, it all reconstituted correctly, so I guess I can't complain. But certainly has an interesting flavor. <laughs> we'll just say that. The wind is picking up here a little bit, man. It's getting kind of crazy, but uh, check out Maddie's setup, man. He's got like the cool guy setup, like the legit setup. Tarp bivy guy. That thing looks so sick. He's got all the wind getting blocked out from the other side. And he's just going to rock it in a bivy. Dude, superstar, I love it. We're gonna take that to the uh, to the summit. We're gonna see if we can post that thing up. That would be way sick to have that 11,000, man. Good stuff, dude, I love it. All right, there she is. Skyscape Trekker, I'm about to close off the door on the other side, because we keep uh, getting a little bit of wind through there, and hopefully I can keep the other side open. But yeah, I'm loving this thing, man. It's certainly spacious. Got my backpack in there and everything. Um, yeah, hard to go wrong with that thing. Alright, we're going to do a little breakfast uh, skillet action this morning. Mountain house. The water boiling. Let's do this. Alright, the Skyscape Trekker did great last night. Um, I will say this, it is a very breezy tent, so you need to make sure that your um, your uh, sleep system is on point. I actually got cold quite a bit with a uh, 20 degree quilt. I had to throw on my jacket underneath to kind of stay warm. But, um, I don't know, I want to say about halfway through the night, I suddenly woke up and just, uh, yeah, I could definitely feel all the breeze coming around me. I mean, this is certainly a, a summer tent. Um, you could definitely do it in the fall. Uh, too, but you definitely got to make sure that your sleep system is on point But yeah, good stuff Pad worked out great um, Everything underneath me was warm, but yeah the uh, the 20 degree EE quilt I don't know. Maybe I need to move the down around. Maybe all of it was down by my feet But um, yeah, everything did great inside here Everything did uh, fine down by my feet also, I was able to keep my pack in there, no problem whatsoever. Yeah, good stuff. 
excited to see how this thing's gonna do on the summit tonight. All right, so this is uh, this is our camp up here. What was it, Matt? We were at 90, what? 90, 92, 93. Yeah, 92, 9300. It's a little bit higher than what, what I originally said, about 8,000. We wanted to, wanted to go ahead and uh, head up to a camp that was a little bit higher. Gets us a little bit closer to the summit today, but uh, yeah, this thing performed flawlessly up here. Now, I don't know what's gonna happen today, but one of the things that we're gonna do is we're gonna be able to get up to the summit pretty early and we're gonna go ahead and do some exploring while we're up there. We're gonna go down the Skyline Trail. What happens today, I don't know, but one of the places I'm hoping to hit up is the uh, Tarn. I don't think we're gonna be able to make it down to the Tarn. Um, just, uh, we may be a little bit beat up and a little bit too exhausted once we get up to the summit to do something like that because it's gonna be another drop of about a thousand feet. Uh, kind of a rock scramble and then basically another thousand feet back up but all of this happening at like you know basically 11,000 feet so we'll see what ends up happening today but um, today's gonna be pretty interesting we're gonna be up on the summit for a very long time um, I am a little bit worried about water resources uh, once we get up there I'm gonna be carrying about what is it um, really I'm only gonna have like four four and three quarter liters, so just a hair under five liters. Uh, so we'll see, man, you know, might be getting a little low on the water in the morning, but getting back down to High Creek Camp, um, you know, should be pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I think I can make it, you know, without even a drop of water from up there. But um, yeah, I would have had a little bit more capacity, but I ended up forgetting one of my water bottles uh, in the truck. Literally, I was kind of sipping from it. Uh, because of the beginning of the hike, you really don't want to carry too much water because as soon as you get up to the to the ridge, there's water right there. So I was kind of sipping from my one of my water bottles and then I ended up leaving it in the truck. So I have less capacity than I expected. But we'll see what happens today. We're going to play it safe no matter what, but it should be pretty fun. Yeah, buddy. Look at that. Yummy, tasty eggs. Come on. That will give me the fuel I need. That will give this growing boy the fuel he needs to get up to the summit today. What's happening? But some bird is uh, <laughs> some bird has gone crazy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we made it to the saddle here at uh, about 10,000 feet or so. Uh, things are going really good. Uh, this morning we're we're plugging around, plugging along, no problem. Um, we got about another mile and a half to go till we get to the top, and then we're going to be up there for uh, for a good portion of the day. Uh, way out in the distance over there, you can see. San Jacinto, absolutely beautiful. And uh, if everything goes as planned, uh, we might be able to talk to, uh, to Jason Huckaba from Huck Outdoors once we get up to the summit. I brought my uh, ham radio and we're gonna see if we can uh, make, a, make some contact. He's gonna be working the fire tower that's near San Jacinto. So it's technically a straight shot. So uh, we should be able to theoretically communicate with each other without a problem but yeah there's San Jacinto looking beautiful as always really excited to get up a little bit higher to get a better look at it the higher you go the better it looks but yeah good stuff pan around over here we got dragon's head up there and I'm not sure what that is to the left of uh, 
left of Dragon's Head, but um, Sanji Summit is behind that. You can't actually see it from here. So yeah, we're going to be getting higher than up there uh, to get to the summit. But yeah, we're at this uh, one saddle. We go, uh, we continue to move up. We got another set of switchbacks, and then we got that long, horrible, horrible switchback that uh, brings you around uh, to the top. We stopped, had a little snack. Now we're heading up. The best part of the trail so far. <laughs> I wish I could say that without laughing. This part's gonna be awful. Now we're hitting a couple patches of snow here. We're making our way up. I don't know if you can see it from here, but uh, yeah, we got that horrible switchback, that really big, ugly one. And then back behind those uh, mountains back over there, that's where the summit is. Uh, we essentially go through a couple of those mountains in between them. There's like a little mini saddle and you come up and over into a valley and then you finally see San Gregorio summit. Check out this view. A dragon's head right over there. You got San Jacinto right over there. And then keep panning over. You got Santiago Peak. Or is that? No, that's Santiago. That's not Santiago down there. Sorry. I don't know. I wonder what that is. Because, yeah, Palomar. actually. What is that? Palomar Mountain. Oh, so I guess, yeah, that's Palomar Mountain. I had that incorrect. And then over there, you got. Uh, Yucaipa Ridge and back behind that you got uh, uh, Santiago Peak and then way back over there You can see San Bernardino, right? And then behind that you see Baldy, correct? That's San Bernardino, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah, you get one heck of a spectacular view up here. So hopefully you could see it in the camera, but uh, They're like red streaks in the snow That's basically algae growing in the snow so that's pretty interesting. That's right, even through the area where we walked just now. Had some red algae over there. And Matt, we're both doing great. Yep. We got view behind them. Yikes, good stuff. Well, we're getting there, little by little. Uh, we're almost done with this horrible part. Right after we get to the first sign, it kind of kind of takes it easy a little bit. I mean, you're still going up about another 500 feet, but it's uh, definitely not as extreme as uh, what we got here. We got Maddie down there. He's coming up right ab right over there, about middle of the screen. But yeah, man, look at this view. We're at some 10,000, 10,700, 10,800 or so. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous up here. Not too bad of wind. Yeah, it's it's absolutely perfect. What do you say there, Matt? Always a brutal hike. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Never ever gets easier, does it? Uh -uh. Nope. Let me zoom out on, on Maddie here so you guys can see <laughs> what we're going through. There you go, look at that. We're pretty high up there. Okay, well this is great news right here. This is the first of two signs that lets you know you are pretty much there. So, alrighty, so this is the next uh, bit of really great news. A sign that shows you that San Gregorio Mountain is just this way. Pretty much we just have maybe about a quarter mile left to go. We're gonna go up through here and then it just kind of dips over that ridge into the valley and then we're finally gonna see the uh, top of uh, San Gregorio. Uh, and then there's like just a little jog up to the top and we're there. Check those out. Matt just noticed them across the way. Those are big giant ravens that are walking around on the snow. Dude, at like 11,000 feet you got ravens walking around on snow. They're eating like the algae in the snow I guess. I mean I would think, right? Look at that dude, that is absolutely crazy. Zoom in again, way down there is Dry Lake. That's where we were a few weeks ago. So, yeah. I love how this place is all interconnected. It's absolutely wonderful. Man, he's just hanging out in the snow. Just chilling. All right, so we're covering up our water in the snow over here to kind of keep it cool. And Maddie got uh, his over there. Went ahead and put mine down in there. And yeah, 
we got a nice patch of snow up here, 11,500 feet. So this is uh, the rock ring where I'm gonna be at, right in here. And Maddie's right over there. So now we're gonna go hop up onto the uh, summit here in just a sec. Well, we made it final on the top of San Gregorio, 11,503. That was not easy. Mm -mm. No, no it wasn't. I got nothing else to say, man. I'm exhausted. The fifth time up here, fifth time up here, and neither time have been simple. Seriously, there's just nothing easy about this hike ever. Making some uh, some boiling water for my next meal, chili mac with beef. I don't know how it's gonna, how good it's gonna be out here. It's uh, pretty warm right now, but. Still, I'm gonna have it. It is time. Man, it's just crazy how quiet it is right now, huh? We've mm -hmm. seen a few day hikers, Matt and I, are kind of perplexed. We don't understand why nobody else is coming up. Um, it's just kind of been him and I yeah. hanging out here. Conserving water. Yeah, trying, <laughs> exactly, trying to, trying to conserve water, but um, yeah. It's uh, it's still been pretty fun overall. It's just yeah, it's kind of kind of weird to not see anybody come up. I, that breaks up the monotony, for lack of a better term. Um, you know, you see people come up. Oh, who is that? You know, that's interesting. Other backpackers, you get people to talk to, and uh, yeah, it's just eerily quiet right now. And yeah, we're both exhausted, so we're not much for talking. <laughs> so it's just yeah, it's a it's an odd silence. Yeah, trying to get comfortable is hard. What we did is we went ahead and we uh, built these seats here um, to just kind of get some nice flat seats to sit on, man. It's just brutal up here. It's literally like Mars with a little bit of vegetation, but I mean, look at it. It's just rocks everywhere. But yeah, still having a great time. So first time I stayed up here at uh, San Gregorio, I stayed in this rock ring. Um, this fits a lunar solo, just barely. But uh, yeah, this is it, and uh, I had wind coming in right through the uh, the front entrance here. It was not the most optimal uh, optimal setup, but uh, yeah, I mean, it worked. We made it work. So it is hot as all can be here on the summit. We got up here a little bit early, so I'm all covered up just to kind of protect myself from the sun. I was kind of walking around over here to kind of do some exploring, looking around. What trips me out, man, is that there's still snow way out there. Yeah, I see those ravens. You can't see it on the GoPro, but I could still see those ravens walking around over there on the snow on the far side. I'm going to walk down over here and just kind of take a look to see what, uh, what I could see back over here. I know I could see, right, you know, Dragon's Head right over there. I want to see if it's possible to see the tarn from over here. So over there, I think that's Bighorn Mountain. The tarn should be right below us over here but I don't know if you could actually see it from here but we'll check it out all right there she is there's a tarn how about that man what an eerie place now the allegation is that from the tarn you can come back up here but boy things look steep a little bit past here I mean it's doable but you got to be on beast mode to get up here from uh, down there. But yeah, you got the tarn down over there. That looks pretty cool. You got dragon's head kind of way out there behind that rock formation. And then yeah, bighorn right over here. And there's uh, on, uh, 
on Dragon's Head, apparently there's a uh, book all the way from 1973, a uh, register book all the way from 1973 over there. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty interesting. I don't know if there's one over here on uh, Bighorn either, but yeah, pretty cool. All right, so this is my setup for tonight. Same as last night, I got the uh, Six Moon Design Skyscape Trekker, and I got it all staked out with rocks. Um, I showed you guys that earlier uh, inside. Got my uh, Thermarest Neo Air, that did great last night. And then my 20 degree uh, EE quilt. Um, I don't know, last night I had points where I was actually very, very cold. So we're gonna see how it does tonight. I went ahead and I shifted some of the down up to the higher parts um, of the quilt. So hopefully we'll get a little bit better result tonight. But yeah, pretty calm up here, a little bit of wind. Just Matt and I right now, nobody else has come up. Yeah, so check out what we found over here. We got a uh, memorial plaque to a uh, Howard Martin Franklin Sr. Born 1944, died 2016. This is a king of our Franklin clan and then it says some other wording but I don't wanna, I don't wanna disturb it in any way. But yeah, up here at uh, 11,000 feet, somebody left us up here. Yeah, it uh, looks like, yeah, it's survived for what? Three-ish years now. How about that? With all the snow that comes up here, that's, that thing's still standing? That's pretty crazy. Okay, I'm gonna have to ask you a question. Can you see me waving? 